Okay, so today I would like to speak about the, so the last part which uh, concerns the small values of alpha for uh, Hastings Levitov processes and or uh, Hedy show. Actually, what I will prove today is valid for both. Um, so, uh, this will be the first thing, so s small values of alpha, and then I will focus on alpha equals zero, which is a very simple model, but uh, for which uh, a mathematician is more happy because uh, we can prove everything there. So, so let, let's, let, let's a little bit focus on a HL zero and show that we have uh, uh, scaling limits and uh, things like this. And then the uh, last thing I would like to speak about is, uh, again with HL zero, prove the roundness of the, uh, pr prove a statement which uh, shows that the, the shape is round. Okay. And um, that will be the, the bridge between this talk and my talk next week. Okay, uh, so the, the main tool I will use for the first part is uh, integral means. So let me, let me just first speak a little bit about that because this is the transition between uh, what I told yesterday when uh, Carlos and Makarov theorem and, and today's. So, what do I mean by integral means? Oh, this is not. Integral means spectrum. So this is uh, uh, one version of multifractal formalism for harmonic measure. Okay, so you, l you look at a map F from uh, the unit disk into C, which is holomorphic and injective. And uh, we look, what we mean by integral means is that we look at the uh, LP norms of the derivative on circles of radius R. So now if the domain is very rough, which is of course uh, the, the kind of domains we like, uh, this, uh, this integral have a tendency to, to, to uh, get, go, go to infinity as r goes to 1. And so we just uh, want to see how it goes to infinity as r goes to 1. Okay? So in the, in the good situation, we have that this behaves like 1 over 1 minus r to the power beta of p. So the power law uh, of blowing up to infinity is given by this uh, number beta of p. Okay, and this is the this is the, the spectrum. So of course this has to be made precise, and I will not do that. So you have to. Wh what do we mean by that? And or what is? That it? is it's a real number, positive real number. Yeah, it's positive. Yeah, it's positive because this must go to infinity. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me, uh, yeah, I will answer later, okay? So this, this is, um, uh, so this, this of course depends on f, okay? So beta f of p, okay? And now we can speak about the universal spectrum. That means we, we can uh, speak about b of p as being the supremum over all f, and for some reason we will take holomorphic, injective, and bounded. Well, there is some technicalities with unbounded functions that I will not go inside, so let's, let's suppose it's uh, bounded, okay? And um, uh, the study of this uh, universal spectrum has shown a lot of, I mean, it's a, it's a very interesting uh, subject, and uh, a lot of things are unknown in this uh, in this setting. So, what what the, so why Carlson and Makarov uh, proved this lemma? You remember this lemma about the number of uh, balls, um, disjoint balls with uh, with uh, uh, harmonic measure bounded from below. Uh, so they proved it to show that uh, 
So the theorem they showed that uh, b of p is equal to p minus 1 if p is less than minus a which is less or equal to minus 2 for some constant a. Greater than two, greater or equal to two. Okay. And the conjecture is that, which is a, a version of Brennan's conjecture, is that a is equal to two. Okay. So that's. Uh, so let let me show you. So this is to answer your question. So what is the, the the prediction about the function b? The prediction about the function b is that it is like this. So we have here minus two, two. Uh, in minus two, it should be equal to one. And uh, uh, here it's. Uh, uh, So uh, for p greater than 2, this is equal to p minus 1. This is actually easy. Uh, for p less than minus 2, it is, as it, is so it is supposed to be, if this conjecture is true, then we have the, the symmetry here. And uh, in between, there is a kind of very speculative conjecture called Kretzer conjecture, saying that in between, it should be equal to just uh, the, the parabola, which, which uh, interpolates between these three points, that means it should be equal to p squared over 4. But that's very speculative conjecture. I mean, so this is uh, the, 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 the conjecture about, about uh, b of p. So let me show you how Carlson and Makarov uh, derived this theorem. So yes? Just, you just remind us in case B is equal to 1, that this is the level of lines which for those seen for the first time. Uh, what do you mean, the level lines? I mean that if B is equal to 1, then this is just an exponent of, of how the Grishin function level lines. Yeah, OK, OK. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, yes, and there, yeah, there is uh, there is some work on on. Uh, I mean, it is not known that it is one quarter at at uh, at one, but there are estimates and and there are I mean uh, theorems uh, kind of kind of. Uh, Um, so let me show you that uh, the, the uh, theorem about these joint uh, balls implies this theorem one. Okay, so again, the purpose of Carlos and Makarov was, uh, was to prove this, not to prove what I said yesterday. Uh, okay, so um, this is just, I, I, I want to show you this because uh, uh, this will show that actually what I need, what, what was needed yesterday for proving the theorem was something connected with a behavior at minus two. For the, for the universal spectrum. And then uh, what I will talk later, for uh, small values of alpha, I will need uh, properties of the spectrum for p close to zero. Okay? So it will be different, uh, uh, d d d different uh, zone of the, of the uh, p uh, line. 
Okay, so uh, subdivise the circle uh, modulus of z equal r uh, into uh, disjoint interval of length uh, y, uh, um, which is equal to 1 minus r. Okay? Put uh, zi, so distant interval i, put zi at the center of i, and uh, define, so fix alpha, alpha between uh, minus 1 and 1, well, 0 and 1, I guess. And define n of alpha as the number of uh, intervals i such that f prime of z i is of the order of y to the alpha. Okay, so we just uh, discretize the circle of radius r and uh, look at the the number of points for which f prime of z i has a certain behavior. Okay. Uh, then the diameter of f of i by Kerber theorem, uh, this is equivalent to y to the power y plus alpha. Okay, it's just uh, y times modulus of f prime. And uh, uh, the harmonic measure of the ball of center okay, so uh, f of and then essentially distance from f of z i to the boundary. Is greater than uh, uh, y, and I put this y to be, um, yes, let's call this rho. Okay, so this is essentially rho here. And this is uh, greater than uh, y, because uh, by construction, and this is just rho to the power 1 over 1 plus alpha. Okay. So, and this is to, to, to catch up with the notations of yesterday, I will say that this is rho to the power 1 over 1 plus c over 2, uh, with c equals 2 to the 1 over 1, 1 plus alpha minus 1. Okay, then by uh, the, the theorem about disjoint balls, we get that n of alpha is less or equal to rho to the power minus k, 2 to the 1 plus alpha minus 1. So this k is, so I, uh, I recall that the, the, the theorem uh, of Carlson Makarov, which was an improvement of the former theorem by Carlson, says that the number of balls uh, disjoint balls with uh, harmonic measure greater than delta to the power 1 plus c over 2 is less than a times um, delta to the power minus kc. So this was this gamma of c originally. This gamma of c was improved to k times c. So this constant k is here. And uh, so that's rho to the power minus k uh, 1 minus alpha divided by 1 plus alpha, and so that's y to the power minus k 1 minus alpha. Okay? And so now we can come back to the integral means. So we have the integral means of f prime to the r e i theta to the p d theta. Uh, well, you can write this as the integral from 0 to 1 of n of alpha. Uh, y to the power 1 plus alpha p d alpha. Okay, you just, uh, you just uh, subdivide this integral where, uh, where the values of f prime is constant, is, uh, is uh, approximately 
y to the alpha. So you get something like this. And so this is by what we have just seen, uh, integral from 0 to 1. And then you have y to the power 1 plus alpha p minus k 1 minus alpha dy. OK, and so by just uh, usual uh, large deviation argument, so we see that the, 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 the dominant thing, so b, b of p will be less or equal than the maximum to alpha uh, in 0, 1 of, uh, and then we have k 1 minus alpha minus 1 minus alpha p. OK, so this is, uh, this is what? This is uh, k minus 1 minus alpha k plus p. OK, and now we assume that p is less than minus k. So if p is less than minus k, so minus k will be the minus, k will be actually a. Okay. So if p is less than minus k, then the maximum is attained for alpha equal 1. And this maximum is precisely minus p minus 1. OK? And so we get uh, very easily this theorem from, from this one. So the, the, the what we have done yesterday was connected to Brennan conjecture in some sense, because it, it was connected to the behavior of b of p for p uh, close to minus 2. What we are going to do today, again, will be connected to values of p close to 2. So what is known for p close to 2? So we uh, of I think so, yes. And so the theorem automatically gives that the value is minus 2 is greater than 1. It's not less than 1, just because it's concise. It's a straight line far away to the left. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So what is known between, uh, for p is close to 0? Uh, well, actually, we will need a version of uh, something. Uh, here, uh, this is a very vague statement. And you can have many, if you want to write it down a precise version, you can have, uh, you can, I mean, it's, it's not clear what to do. So what I will actually need near 0 is something very strong. It's a very strong statement saying that, for instance, for all f, there exists a constant k such that for any r, we have that uh, less or equal to, 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 to that or something like this. OK, so I, I, will have a very, I will need a very strong quantitative assumption. And of course, the price to pay for this strong uh, quantitative assumption is that we may be far from the optimal bound, but we will not care because we will not need any bound. So the, the property we will need is a theorem which is quite old and due to Cluny and Pomerenke. I think this goes back to the 70s or even uh, earlier. And, uh, uh, well, the theorem says that B of P is less or equal to P square, oh, sorry, 3 P square plus 7 P cube uh, for P small. And uh, it, it, uh, with, with precise quantitative meanings. So I, I, I don't say exactly what I mean by that, but I will tell you later when I will apply it. So with precise quantitative meaning. So actually, the only thing we will need, so in particular, B of P is little o of P as, at 0. OK, and that's on the only thing we will need. OK, so actually, th there is a derivative at 0. That's what it says. That th there is no angle here. <coughs> and uh, using this theorem, I, I would like to show the following theorem. So this is due to uh, Rode and myself. And um, 
so for small alpha, uh, positive, uh, uh, and for H, L, or alpha, and the proof would, would also give the same bound for H, S, R. Alpha. So here we can uh, we can uh, consider the, the random the random process. Actually, what happens is that for alpha less than one, even the random processes are not random, and for alpha greater than one, even the deterministic processes are random. That's that's uh, philosophy. <laughs> um, so. Uh, Almost surely, so we, we, one must be careful with the order of the quantifiers. Almost surely, there exists a k greater than zero, such that for any n, c n, so c n will be the the logarithmic capacity of the n's cluster, is greater than k n to the power one minus seven square root of alpha divided by alpha. So th th this uh, don't consider seriously this seven times square root of alpha. This is just to give a precise bound. But of course, what we what we show is that it grows at least like n to the power one of alpha. And uh, computer simulations show that this is sharp, They're really sharp. I mean, it's, they, the, the computer simulations show that this one over alpha is really, really the right bound. <coughs> Okay, so let me let me uh, prove this. Okay, so first of all, let me recall uh, how how uh, the process is is uh, obtained. So it's obtained as a as a iteration of conformal maps, and um, these conformal maps are of the form like this. Okay, with some uh, tip here. So, uh, if if this is if this is delta, then what we get is that. So this let's call this h delta of z. So this will be of the form one plus lambda z plus etc. So when one plus lambda is uh, is uh, logarithmic capacity of this. Uh, compact set and this logarithmic capacity is such that lambda is about delta square okay of the order of delta square so uh, it follows that to pass from cn to cn plus 1 well you just multiply cn by the quantity here for cn plus uh, 1 so this will be uh, 1 plus lambda n plus 1 cn okay and uh, so what we get is that cn plus 1 minus cn divided by cn which will be the rate of growth will be uh, of the order of lambda n plus 1 and this lambda n plus 1 as we have seen is of the order of epsilon n to the alpha Okay, where epsilon n is a regularized uh, function that we have uh, introduced. Okay. So again, uh, what we will need, so the expectation of uh, cn plus 1 minus cn divi sorry, divided by cn, knowing kn, this is just the expectation of this which is just the integral of this because uh, the, the, the randomness here is the choice of the point on the boundary okay so uh, this is uh, so expectation of epsilon n to the alpha and uh, we will actually need uh, negative powers of epsilon we will uh, use we, w we want to have a lower bound here so we will use first uh, older by Hölder, this is greater than 1 over expectation of epsilon n to the power minus alpha over r to the power r. So this is true for r positive. So we just 
just take any r so far and we will fix the value of r later. Okay. So now, since we want a lower bound for this quantity, we need a upper bound for this one, and this is uh, the good news because this will uh, rely to um, integral means for phi prime with positive exponent. Okay. Now uh, we are going to use a method which is similar to Carlson Makarov, so that is, we are going to subdivide the interval uh, whether uh, the values of uh, uh, according to the values of uh, modulus of f prime, or, or which, which is the same to the values of epsilon n. So, put uh, e k to be the set of u such that epsilon n of u is about two to the minus k. Okay, so we subdivide the circle into these sets. Then, uh, uh, expectation of epsilon n to the power minus alpha over r to the power r is equivalent to the sum of for k greater or equal to zero of two to the k alpha over r modulus of e k, uh, no, not modulus, uh, measure of e k. Okay. So uh, we just discretize the thing, so we have this. Now we want to have a bound for the measure of e k, and to, to, to derive this bound, we will use uh, cluny pomeranke uh, theorem. So we can write that 2 to the k p e k this is about integral over e k of phi n prime of 1 plus 2 to the minus k u to the power p du. Okay? On e k, epsilon n is about constant and is about uh, 2 to the minus k. So we can write this. And in this, we just forget about e k and we just write that this is less than the integral over t of phi n prime of 1 plus 2 to the minus k u to the p du, which is just the integral mean for, so uh, now it's an integral mean for function outside of the disk, but this is, a, I mean, this is a, the same thing, okay? There is some little technical points to, to, to take care of, but I will not speak about them because it's, they are obvious, okay? And so by, um, Uh, yes, so by cluny pomerinke so here, here is uh, where I will use the quantitative version of cluny pomerinke Phi n prime is not a normalized uh, uh, univalent function. At infinity, it has a huge derivative. So cluny pomerinke takes care of this derivative. So actually, we can factor out the uh, value of the derivative at infinity, which is just Cn. So we have Cn to the p, and then uh, we have 2 to the k beta of p. So this is exactly the inequality which is given by cluny pomerenke okay? So this, is, this comes from the spectrum, and this quantity comes from the quantitative version we have here. Okay? So we have that. Now putting things together, so uh, putting this inside there, we get that, um, oh, so first of all, we get that ek is less or equal to uh, c times cn to the p, uh, 2 to the k beta of p minus p. And uh, finally, expectation of epsilon n to the power minus 1 of our r to the power r is less than a constant c times cn to the p times r and then sum for k greater or equal to zero of 2 to the minus k and then we have p minus beta of p minus alpha over r 
to the power r. So that's what we get with this analysis. Okay. So now for this inequality to, to, to be relevant, we need that this, quant this quantity is, uh, is finite. So we need that the exponent here is negative. And that's where we will use the fact that beta of p is uh, is uh, little o of p. So we need uh, we need p minus beta of p minus alpha over r positive. And now let's put tau equals pr. So we need, um, uh, so what we need is tau minus alpha minus uh, tau beta of p divided by p positive. Okay, and now we are going to play with tau. Okay, so we fix uh, uh, for any tau less greater than alpha. Okay, we can find uh, we can find p uh, such that uh, one is true by cluny pomerink because beta of p divided by p goes to zero, okay? So we can find the p very small, such that this is positive. And so once, uh, uh, once we have done that, so uh, p being chosen, we take uh, r such that pr is equal to tau. Okay, so R is equal to tau over P. And so we have proven, proposition, so we have proven that for any eta greater than zero, uh, there exists a K equals K of eta, uh, such that uh, for any n greater than zero, for any alpha positive, uh, for h uh, uh, for h l alpha, expectation of c n plus one minus c n divided by c n, knowing k n is greater than uh, k times c n to the power minus alpha minus eta. Okay. So in in other words, we have proven the theorem at the level of expectations. Okay, because this means that uh, well, this is this is a uh, well, this is a derivative of C n, so this is a differential inequality in some sense, and you can integrate this differential inequality to get to get what you want. Okay, and so now to get the almost true result. Well, I'm not sure I want to go into that because this is a just technical thing. So we use the usual trick uh, by uh, using a borel cantelli type argument. So maybe I don't go into that. Okay, so to get the uh, almost sure result, we use a borel cantelli argument. So this is extremely standard. Uh, of course, we have to be a little bit careful about the constants, but uh, it's uh, so it's, uh, this this uh, this reflects in uh, in the fact that at the end we find this square root of alpha. Okay, so it's just a choice of constant, but this is not a big uh, big deal. Okay, so that's that's uh, so that finishes the 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 proof. I mean proof. Oh, I mean at least the semi-proof of, of uh, uh, Hastings Levitov conjecture about this phase transition at alpha equals 1 for HL of alpha. Okay, so uh, uh, if you 
if you look at, uh, so to resume, so if we look at, uh, so we take, say, HS of alpha for alpha between uh, 0 and 2, and we look at, uh, so C, uh, C of alpha, uh, so sorry, uh, CT. So we look at diameter of CT. Uh, so this is equivalent to uh, t to the power um, beta of alpha, and if we plot one of a, one of a beta in terms of alpha, so we have that this is equal to to uh, t here, and this, and then uh, it is equal to. Um, uh, 1 plus t over 2, so we have really something here. So we really have something. Well, the derivative is, is 1 half here. So we see a phase transition, as I told you. So this proves the, 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 this, this fact. OK, so now let's go to HL0. So HL0, uh, so I have given a version of HL of alpha with, uh, with Poisson, uh, uh, Poisson times. And uh, at each Poisson time, we add uh, such a thing. So the version I will give here is uh, the the most uh, is is uh, the more trivial one, which is the same but uh, with the change of time simply. Okay, so uh, so the version of H L of zero I say here is I just uh, by the way that was the version I was given here also that I, I just add something every uh, unit of time. Okay, not every random unit of time. So uh, Kn is just the boundary of phi 1 composed with phi n of delta, where phi j of z is uh, uj times phi of z over uj for, for some uj on the boundary. Okay? And now phi is a fixed conformal map. That is a uh, well, it's something like this with a fixed delta here. So, in some sense, H L of zero is the dual to D L A. D L A. In D L A, uh, we have we had a fixed object in the image. Okay. In uh, in H uh, L zero, we had a fixed object on the level of uh, the conformal map plane. So, um, and um, well, it appears that we, we have done some bibliography here. It appears that this model has been considered a, lot, a long time ago by uh, Pomerenke and Rochberg. And they, they already did some, some computations with this model. Uh, the purpose was, again, to, to find uh, bad domains for, for to, 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 to find extremals in this uh, um, spectrum of a universal spectrum. Okay. So here now, since we have a fixed map, so phi of z starts with some one plus lambda, and then of course the growth of k n is trivial because c n is just 1 plus lambda to the n. So we have the exponential growth. Okay. So we know exactly the diameter of the, uh, well, uh, we know the, the order of magnitude of the, of the diameter uh, very precisely. Okay, now we would like to make sense of 
the fact that this uh, process has a scaling limit. So what, does, what do we mean by that? So first of all, we need, of course, this uh, Kn grow, uh, is pretty much growing, so we, wa we want to normalize it. OK, so to do that, we, uh, so let's call this capital Phi N. Okay. So Phi N of Z is, this is just 1 plus lambda to the N Z plus a certain constant that I will call uh, An. So this is Cn also, plus uh, smaller terms. So we will normalize things by putting phi n twiddle of z being uh, phi n of z minus a n divided by c n. Okay. So subtracting a n means we, we center this at zero in some sense, and divided by c n means that we scale it so that it stays in, in, in the screen of your computer. Um, And so phi n twiddle, we can say that this belongs to sig a set that we will call sigma naught, which will be the set of f from delta to c, which are holomorphic injective, and uh, with normalized by f of z equals z plus uh, capital O of 1 over z at infinity. Okay. So this set is a compact set. So this set is compact for the topology of uniform convergence on, on compact sets. And we can even put a metric on sigma, on sigma naught, by just using the uniform uh, distance on the circle of radius 2, for instance. That's, that would be enough. So d of fj will be just the supremum for modulus of z equal 2 of f of z minus g of z. OK, so this is, so we have a compact set and uh, uh, a, a, a metric on this compact set, the metric given the topo giving the topology. OK, so now the random process induces a, a, a measure Pn on on uh, sigma naught, okay. So uh, yeah, okay. So just take uh, okay. Call L the uh, the bag measure. on the circle. OK, so the randomness is just uh, L to the n. OK, the randomness is for kn. We have this circle times, we have the n copy of the circles, and we take uh, the, the product measure because we independently choose a point at each uh, stage. OK, so um, we have the map sigma n, which takes u1, un, and this gives phi n twiddle. Okay, and this maps transfers the uh, Lebesgue measure here, which is ln, to here. Okay, so pn will be um, sigma n. Oh, sorry, ln composed with sigma n minus 1. Okay, so that's a measure on sigma naught. And what do we mean by saying that there is a scaling limit? We just say that Pn has a weak limit as n goes to infinity. <laughs> okay. Excuse me? Oh, OK. So theorem. So there exists P infinity on 
um, sigma naught such that uh, Pn goes to P infinity weakly. Okay, so the proof of this was, uh, I mean, this in the this is a work, a joint work with Stefan Rode, and uh, I should say that this is really due to Stefan. And he attributed the idea to, to Schramm. I think the idea is very beautiful, very simple. The fact is that, in some sense, Kn is given by phi 1 composed with phi n. And this goes in the wrong direction. Because this, this uh, iteration, you iterate from the right, and uh, this g gives bad things. So, so the idea is that, OK, it would be much better to have phi n composed with phi 1, but this has the same low. Okay? So in some sense, uh, Pn has the same low as another process, which is much nicer. And that's, that's the idea. Okay? Uh, so let so proof let uh, rn be the just the map which reverses the order so apparently uh, Odech Schramm used this idea for some other things i don't know what but uh, um, I mean, I, I mean the idea of, of just reversing things. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, the the fact is that uh, obviously R n preserves uh, the Lebesgue measure T uh, L n. Okay. And so um, we have that P n is equal to L n composed with sigma n composed. Oops, Rn minus one. Just because uh, Rn, uh, Ln composed with Rn minus one is equal to Ln. Okay. And now what happens is that sigma n composed with Rn converges uniformly uh, on Tn. Well, actually, uh, we need t infinity, so we have to, to, to make this a little bit precise. But this is just due that now, if you compose the conformal map by phi n composed with phi n minus 1 composed with phi 1, then you can just apply. Um, uh, well, let, 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 me, let, me, let me precise this. Let me precise. So define tau n of u1, un. So tau n it will now be defined on uh, t to the power infinity. Okay, so, uh, so I have a sequence here. And I define this as uh, uh, hn. Sorry, that will be phi n composed with phi n minus 1 composed with phi 1 minus a n divided by Cn. So I use the same normalization, but for the reverse uh, thing here. OK, and so that's sigma n composed with Rn of u1, un, if you want to write down correctly this. So we define a, 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 a function on t infinity, uh, but so you first project on Tn, and then you, you apply sigma n composed with rn. Okay. Now put psi n, which is equal to uh, phi n composed with phi 1. And uh, <coughs> f will be, take a, um, m greater than n. So this will be phi m composed with phi n plus 1. So take m greater than n. Uh, divided by 1 plus lambda to the power m minus n. Okay. So now, if you look at tau m 
of u minus tau n of u. This will be f composed with psi n minus psi n divided by c n minus uh, a of f divided by c n. And if you look at what you have uh, here, you can just so you, you apply Kerber in the form uh, phi of z minus c of phi z minus a of phi is less than a constant times c of phi over z for modulus of z greater than 1. So if you have a function psi which is univalent outside of the disk and you just subtract the first two terms of the Laurent expansion, what you get is really a, a, a capital O of 1 over z with a, in a strong sense. Okay, so you get this. And if you apply this here, you get that You get that the distance from tau n to, uh, well, the norm, let's say, the norm of tau n minus tau m infinity will be less than a constant time divided by cn, proving that tau n is a Cauchy sequence for the uniform, uh, for the uniform norm. And using that, we get the we get the result. So we get a we get a, a limit. Okay, now we do the following thing. So we have. So is it clear? Well, I skipped a little bit the details, but the, this is in, in in my paper with with Stefan. I mean, this is a, this is not very deep uh, thing anyhow. So. Um, so now we know that there is a scaling limit, okay? So now we fix a delta and we consider the scaling limit. So we have some, some, some object. And now we want to let delta go to zero. And the, 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 the theorem is that at the end we get a circle, okay? So uh, now we, want, we would like to make this clear that the, we have a round shape as delta go to zero. Okay. <laughs> so it, it, should be, uh, it should be clear what, what we mean by that. So if you look at the, at the limit of, so again, uh, HL zero, you start with a disk and then you add something and then you add something. What you add is exp becomes exponentially large. So the growth is extremely large. So essentially the size of the object you add at times n is of order of the size of the object itself, okay? Because it's exponentially increasing. So you get really something really very hairy, hairy. <laughs> and when you scale down, of course you don't see the disk anymore. So when you scale down, you see something like just uh, uh, something like this, okay? I didn't bring my computer, I have some pictures of that I should have. Okay, and now once you have this object which is the limit, we let delta go to zero, so we get still an object which is of size one, we don't, we don't shrink the, the whole thing. And what we get is a circle, so it means that this, this thing is rather round. And is uh, even more round when we go to zero. Okay, so that's what I want to prove now. So to do that, I come back to the model, uh, which is the random model I defined. So uh, uh, come, le let us come back. So uh, maybe I s took the wrong. Let us come back to uh, HL zero uh, in terms of uh, exponential. Uh, random variables. 
Okay, so uh, again, you have uh, xj, a sequence of exponential uh, independent uh, variables with exponential low with mean 1. Okay, you put tau j equals x1 plus xj, and between tau j and tau j plus 1, you add your object. Okay, so this means that the uh, um, the Lovner equation uh, giving the the process is driven by uh, uh, oh okay thank you is driven by a Levy process. So it's actually, in this case, it's a compound Poisson process. Which is just a random, random uh, sum of random variables. Okay. Um, so it is a very simple one here, but still, it is a Levy process. So what is a Levy process? So uh, it means that lambda of t, the driving function, is e to the i l t, okay? And l t is this Levy process. What does it mean, Levy process? Well, it has a, a Markov property. That means that uh, uh, if you take s less than t, then lt minus ls is independent of uh, ls, of what, what is before. And it has a stationary uh, increment. That means lt minus ls as a low depending only on t minus s. And, uh, and, and uh, using these properties, we can see that the characteristic function of lt, which is given by e to the i xi lt, this will be of the form e to the minus t eta of xi for some function eta, which is not any, which has uh, some constraints, and eta is called the Levy symbol. So, the actu so actually, we, we could write down ex exactly what is eta in our case. But we will not need it. Okay. So the, the 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 fact that we have this will allow us to make a lot of computations. And so, using that, we will now come back to the original uh, idea of of uh, of Lovner, which is to compute the coefficients of f t. So here, of course, we have coefficients outside of the disk. But this doesn't matter. Okay, so we have the map FT. And this is, let's uh, uh, put e to the t in factor. So e to the t will be the size of the, of the object, will be the seat. So analog of Cn, and then we have Z plus uh, B0 of T plus sum for N greater or equal to 1 of Bn of T divided by Z to the N. Okay. Now, actually we will kind of reprove the, 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 the theorem here, because what will happen is that all these Quanti all these bn of t's will have limit as t go to infinity. And this is the same as saying that we have a scaling limit. The scaling limit is just by dividing by e to the t. Okay? And, uh, okay. and what we have to prove is that if we look at these limits as n go to infinity, if we can show, so theorem, expectation of bn of t uh, of, sorry, uh, uh, wait a minute, I'm a little bit confused, yeah. Okay. 
limit as t goes to infinity of bn of t square. Uh, oh, okay. I, I forgot to say some one thing. I forgot to say one thing. Uh, so now, what does it mean that delta go to zero? Okay, M saying that delta go to zero means that we can replace the exponential time, the, the mean of the exponential time by one, by a, a mean which is s smaller. Okay, and uh, so we, we just increase the time. So it means that here we can uh, put a factor here. So uh, letting delta go to zero uh, uh, reflects in the Lovno equation by trans uh, changing eta to uh, kappa eta. I put kappa in purpose because this will be the same kappa as in SLE. Or maybe square root of kappa, I don't know. But uh, we just take a factor and, and let kappa go to infinity. Okay? Because this will exactly mean that we let delta go to zero because we, 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 uh, we, grow, we grow into much smaller interval of times. So it means that the, the size of the object we attach is smaller. So expectation of this go to zero as kappa goes to infinity. Okay. If you take SLE kappa, for instance, and if you let kappa go to infinity, then al you also get a round thing, something uh, go, uh, becoming round, round. And so, and this is for n, of course, for n uh, greater or equal to zero. For, for n equals zero, actually, it is true, but we will not need it. But it is true for l on n positive. So it means that the limit is just the identity, and that we get the round shape. Okay. And so the idea is to to come back to Loewner's method to compute the coefficients. So what we do is that, well, we recall the equation is f t dot equals z f t prime, z plus lambda of t divided by z minus lambda of t. And we just expand both sides here as a power series in z, in z and just identify. Okay. So for instance, ft dot will be uh, uh, e to the t times z plus sum for n greater or equal to 0, bn plus bn dot. So I put a dot also on the b answers for derivatives with respect to t. And then I have z to the minus n. And ft prime, uh, so it's e to the t times 1 minus sigma for n greater or equal to 0 of n b n over z to the n plus 1. And then the z plus lambda divided by z minus lambda. So this is 1 plus lambda over z divided by 1 minus lambda over z, and we expand. And we get uh, 1 plus 2 times sum for n greater or equal to 1, the lambda n divided by z n. OK? So we multiply and we compute. So the computation is rather in involved, especially when you go for large n. But uh, it can be done. It can be done. And so let me show you what happens for b0 and b2. So if you identify things, you get b0 plus b0 dot equals um, 2 lambda. And b1 plus b1 dot, if I have, if, if, if I have not uh, made a mistake, <laughs> equals minus b1 plus 2 lambda square. OK, after that, uh, it becomes more and more uh, complicated. Because here are the two things. I, B1 doesn't depend on B0, but if you compute B2, you will have an equation involving B1. So you will have first to compute B1, plug it in into the equation, but at each step, you always have to solve a linear equation of order 1 with second-hand side, so you, uh, all the computation can be done. Okay. So for instance, this means that if you look at B0, 
let me do things for B0. For B1, it would be exactly the same. B0 will be exactly this. 2 times e to the minus t times integral from 0 to t lambda of s e to the s ds. Okay? So when you compute expectation of B0 t square, so we use the, the classical trick to write an, uh, a product uh, as a double integral. Okay? So this would be 4 times e to the minus 2t, and then I have integral from 0 to t, uh, integral from 0 to t, and then I have e to the i ls1 minus ls2, uh, e to the s1 plus s2, ds1, ds2. Okay, and now I split this integral into two parts, whether uh, S1 is greater than S2 or S1 is less than S2. Okay, and then I compute the expectation. And you see, when you compute the expectation, what comes into the picture is just the characteristic function of LT. Okay, so you will get something like E expectation of E to the I LS1 minus LS2. And this will be, for instance, if S1 is greater than S2, it will be e to the minus eta of 1, because here C is equal to 1, uh, and then um, S1 minus S2. Okay? And if you have a 2 here, you will have eta of 2. So actually it means that the whole business, all the coefficients, will just depend on the values of eta at the integers, positive or negative. Okay? Uh, by the way, the eta of minus psi uh, must be equal to eta of psi bar. That's one of the constraints uh, for Levy symbols. Okay. They need to obey some kind of, of uh, Bochner, Bochner type estimate, positive definite and things like this. Okay, so uh, finally what we get is that um, so you, you compute the integral, everything can be computed in, uh, explicitly, and what you get is that uh, the limit as t goes to infinity of expectation b0 square is equal to uh, 4 times real part of 1 over 1 plus eta 1. Okay? Eta, uh, this is eta of 1. Okay? And since eta of 1 as a factor kappa, it goes to 0 as kappa goes to infinity. And now, okay, now, uh, well, now you have to prove that when you compute Bn, I mean, the computation is very, very, hard, very difficult. I mean, when you want to, it's, it's explicit, but you need a computer, okay? Because it's very long. You have uh, something like 10,000 to compute, for instance, B3, maybe even B, B2 you can do by hand, but B3, you maybe have uh, uh, 10,000 integrals of this form to compute. So each of them is very simple, but you have a lot of them. Okay, so you need a computer. But what can be shown is that the result for any n is something like, uh, with respect to kappa, you have a polynomial in kappa divided by a polynomial in kappa, and the degree of the denominator is one, is one more than the degree of the numerator. And so you go to zero, and then go to infinity for any n, and this proves the randomness of the thing. So in my, I just maybe, advertised for my talk in Moscow, for those who will come, uh, uh, with, uh, with Bertrand Duplantier and uh, two Vietnamese students, we have uh, studied these uh, in general. So the coefficient problem, so it's not exactly in this setting. This is the setting of radial uh, Loewner equation. We have studied it in the original Loewner setting, which is a whole plane, um, whole plane uh, Loewner equation. And in this setting, we have observed, without any, ex we have no explanation for that, but we have observed a, a, a incredible universal behavior. So for instance, for 
uh, here you, if you take for instance uh, uh, alpha stable processes so that means one possibility for eta is eta of c equals uh, um, kappa c to the alpha over 2 okay so for instance alpha equal 2 will would, would give uh, sle okay <laughs> Um, uh, for kappa equals uh, 2 and 6 the, val the value of the expectation of the coefficient doesn't depend on alpha okay and, and for alpha equals for kappa equals 6 it is equal to 1 and for kappa equal 2 it is equal to uh, n for the whole plane coefficients so this is strange phenomena that we don't we have no explanation for maybe you have it's exactly the same kappa, yes. Well, we put it so that it is the same kappa. So, um, and uh, usually in this business, when uh, I mean, what I have learned when I have learned SLE is that the, the usual tool is Ito calculus. Okay, here there is nothing, no Ito calculus, just characteristic function here and computations with the characteristic function. Anyhow, when alpha is less than 2, there is no Ito calculus because uh, the process is, is uh, um, uh, bounded variation. So, I don't know. So, universal with respect to alpha. So, it doesn't depend, the result does not depend on alpha. It's even more than that. It doesn't depend on the, on the Levy process you consider. It just depends. So, if, if eta of 3, uh, so. Uh, I forgot now, but uh, kappa equals 6 corresponds to eta of 3 equals something. Uh, if you have this, well, then the expectation is equal to 1. That's it. Whatever the other values are. So it's a very strange thing, and we have no explanation for that. We have no real proofs, by, by the way. We have, we have the computer, computer evidence. We can compute uh, step by step, but for, for n bigger than 20, even the computer give up. It's too difficult. Maybe there is a way to, to compute an exact formula, but we don't have that. Well, anyhow, we, here we can, uh, we, we can, this we can show that, that this goes to zero. That, that's, that's rather easy by, by just induction. Okay, that's it. So it was a great pleasure for me to give this series of lectures in this prestigious town. <laughs> so thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> <laughs>